People have different levels of ama or toxins in their body and uh, that's the culprit along with the imbalanced doshas of um, the root cause of a lot of disease, disorder, imbalance and pain. The main thing I see with people, even if they didn't notice it, is that there's a huge elimination um, of pain mm. or reduction. So that's a, that's a main uh, specific measurable result. That's a major result. I know. Wow. I know. So you could have many different results and all of them would be beneficial, whether you did it for a week, two weeks, or three weeks, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's great. Well, I'm so happy to have had you on the show. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And we look forward to the mini consultation that we're going to have later on in the show. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to talking to you again. And now I'd like to introduce a wonderful musician and friend, Nirja, who's going to be chanting for us in the ancient Vedic tradition. Hi, I'm joined today by my beloved Rob Parsons playing drum and singing with me, and we'll be doing a song to Lord Krishna and his beloved Radha. Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya 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 Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya 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 Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Raja Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Thank you, Nirja, for that beautiful chant. And now I'd like to introduce Tatiana Blanco, who is another Ayurvedic practitioner on the east side in Anahola. Aloha. How are you, Tatiana? Hello, Taj. I'm well and grateful to be here. Oh, and we're very happy to have you with us to share your knowledge and wisdom of Ayurveda. Thank you. So, how would you like to tell us a little bit about how you got involved in Ayurveda? Yes, I stumbled across Ayurveda in my massage training when I moved to Kauai from London. And um, I didn't want to stay in massage school to do a regular apprenticeship. 
and I found an opportunity to apprentice at an Ayurvedic clinic here on Kauai. Oh, that's a blessing to be yes. able to stay here to study. Yes. And then what made you go deeper into it? Because I know you've been doing it for quite some time. Yes. Um, that's a great question. Partly I just loved applying the treatments. I really get along well with the warm oil and the treatments that we were doing. And then partly because I was experiencing so much benefit in my own health and well-being and uh, education of how to keep caring for that, that took me deeper. I wanted to know more. So as you got deeper into it, you, you had more sessions on yourself as well yes. as giving more sessions. Yes, of course. Ah, okay. <laughs> so then what um, area of practice did you go into? What is it that you like to do with Ayurveda the most? Yes. Well, I have been uh, pouring warm oil on people, really, literally, for years. And then when I started to be a practitioner, I got pregnant. And I had been using... Um, the tradition of Ayurveda to prepare for conception. This wasn't an easy path for me, but it was something that I really wanted to have a baby. And so I worked with uh, how to prepare, actually myself and my husband, through the process of Panchakarma to prepare the egg and the sperm. In Ayurveda, we're very specific. We kind of want to juice up the reproductive tissue before conception, and because we believe that the baby builds its body through the health and well-being and the food and the practices that are in the parent's body at the time of conception. So I studied this. So how long before you even yes. conceived your child? <laughs> because this is conscious conception. This is uh, it's such an incredible offering yes. that, you're, that you're even talking about right now. Um, how long before you conceived did you begin preparation? Yes. Well, I tend to be a little excessive, that's my vata, and for me it was honestly about six years. I felt that's how consciously I was preparing, but usually I help people, it's within a year or two. Wow, and what does that entail? What, I mean, how do you yes. change your life to, to create yes. this, this opening for a child yes. to come in on such a level? Yes. Well, to change the mind enough to let the tissue be kind of cleansed all seven layers in so to speak. So this is the first layer, mm -hmm. the outer skin, and then the reproductive tissue is the seventh layer. So it was a constant cleansing through Panchakarma once or twice a year for all those years and changing my mind because yes. I had tremendous emotional stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> like we all do and I found that it goes with the physical cleansing. And so your husband was willing to do this as well. Yes, yes. Well, that's pretty miraculous yes. all on its own there <laughs> that you could find a partner that was willing for six years to, to do this work. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And so what about on the mental levels for him? Did he do the same work as you? Well, you would need to ask him. But my take on it is, um, yes, he let go a lot of old beliefs and any resistances that he had to letting himself have a child. And we were both a lot later than usually we would expect to conceive. And so I think that it helped us to accept that we were older, having children and knowing we could do it confidently oh, with so, good health. That's so wonderful. I'm, I do fertility work with hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I get this incredible opportunity to work with parents on conscious conceptions, a different way, but but very much the same as what you're talking about. So when you work through your own fears, your child is not going to come into the world with the same fears. You'll have cleaned them all up and freed the child. So it's a really magnificent thing that you have done for your child. And I know you have, how old is your child now? 20 months. Oh my gosh, yes. already. So then when you get through conception and you conceive, what's the next step? Yes. Well, I worked very Ayurvedically for the nine months. I totally trusted the Ayurvedic doctor that I was working with on the island and studying with. And I just followed him. You know, to tell you the truth specifically, I don't remember all the details. Mm -hmm. But the general idea was receiving, keeping opening the body to receive more. And it was very interesting because I had planned a home birth and we were full on into a home birth and we needed to transport to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And probably the greatest gift now, in retrospect, is that from my Ayurvedic perspective, I didn't think that I could help 
hospital birthers. Mm -hmm. I, I sort of rather dismissed that in a somewhat judgmental way and now it's transformed me the whole experience because I was one of the hospital birthers that and even more than that I ended up having a belly birth the mm -hmm. baby came out of my belly so not, you had a c-section absolutely mm -hmm. and so that was not something that I thought that I was going to experience and what has been amazing is once I had taken six weeks to recover from that surgery just through rest and um, just general surgery recovery I was able to go into a full Ayurvedic postpartum procedure with daily massages and the baby received a massage every day for the first year and um, this was really wonderful for me because I saw that it was the best complement to the right. hospital experience and I, my mind wasn't open enough for that before I went through it so 